I know I'm not the first one to tell you this, but no-code SaaS products are the future. And this is exactly why I've decided to build our own no-code SaaS tool. And in this video, I'll show you the exact process of how we built our own SaaS tool in just three months, which literally powers our whole multi-million dollar business how you can do the same thing for your product or for your idea or for your service-based business and some of the biggest pitfalls in the whole process when you're considering to go ahead and create a low-code SaaS tool. And of course, be sure to stay until the end of the video in order to see which mistakes we've made so that you don't need to make the same costly mistakes on your skin. Let's dive in. Let's start with the basics. What does every SaaS tool need? It's gonna need like the backend, the frontend and the logic. And for the longest time in the usual development process, when you were launching any sort of a startup, you were basically writing the same code over and over again to go ahead and create the backend. Then you were writing frontend a lot more than probably needed with kind of custom code just to finally come to the fun part and actually do the logic and do the core part of the platform itself. And with the introduction of like no-code tools like Webflow, Wizd, and Xano, and Bubble, and many other tools which allow you to build SaaS tools with no-code, that process got way easier. Instead of writing backend, you can use Xano. Instead of writing frontend, you can use Webflow. And instead of the logic, in our case, you can use Wizd. And the best thing is, you're just leaving the core principles of actually how the product should be built. And you're removing the manual labor from that. So it's not like that if you're a complete newbie, it's gonna be really, really easy to build it but if you know the logic and you have like the proper programmatic thinking you're gonna be creating a product much faster so let's see how we've done the exact same process for our tool called six star the first part was of course logic business structure and design in general one of the things we tried solving is how can we automate our business? And I do believe that's like the core benefit of using no code tools in the end. We're using many different project management tools because like our clients are using different project management tools. Let's figure out to use a single tool, which is going to be built in house. We were consistently pulling reports for how many hours clients use, how many didn't they use. And that process became really manual. We wrote a lot of SOPs and those SOPs were boring. So just because of that, I do believe that no code tools can be a real game changer changer for all companies. It doesn't necessarily need to mean that you're going to be creating a SaaS tool which you're going to go with on the market too, but it means that you're going to be able to leverage technologies to go ahead and automate your business and make it much easier to run without writing SOPs, but instead of writing code and like writing no code logic on how those SOPs are going to be executed so that your company can run smoother. And just because of that, we've created like six star to go ahead and have all of those things for our studio. So basically at every single point we can see uh, which from our team members is available. We can see which tasks clients have. They can submit new tasks. They can see their team. They can report a P1 bug, which is gonna behave in a different way. We integrate with different APIs like Clockify. We're currently working on integrating with Asana and like many other tools, which are gonna allow our business to run better, to run smoother. And in the end, to make sure that if we decide maybe to sell our business at one point, we have a system which is built on top of a software instead of a system which is built on processes which people need to run. And the response has been great. I mean, like our team is much more efficient because everybody sees just what everybody needs to see. We create systems for team leads, which are different than the for systems for kind of our team members, different system for C-level people, et cetera, et cetera, allowing us to actually build processes and reporting inside of a software on our own without spending millions of dollars. And all of that sounds pretty fun, but how did we actually do it? The first part is gonna be the front end. I do believe that Webflow is a visual development tool. And that's exactly why we've decided to go ahead and develop the front end of the app inside of Webflow. This was great because we could develop the app much, much faster. Then we can test it out on many different screens directly inside of Webflow. And we could also add interactions where needed in order to make sure that everything runs as smoothly as possible. One thing where you're probably gonna be having some constraints when you're developing in Webflow is that at specific points, you're not gonna have the data directly connected when you're doing front end but you need to publish your website and see the data kind of how the data is going to be looking like tools like Wizd allow you to go ahead and connect the data to front end and to visualize it in a better way after the front end of course we needed to have a tool for the back end where we've used Xano and it's been really a great experience with a lot of learnings and a lot of mistakes also in the process on kind of setting up our first ever back end system and this is where we actually made a lot of mistakes because we were always creating the back end for what we need currently 
and not for what we're gonna need like into the future. So that's why I strongly believe that even though no code is considered to be like an easier way to develop and an easier way to launch your platform, you still need, need, need to have some technical knowledge when you're setting up the backend first point. And because of that, we were actually rebuilding our application three times because the initial build for the backend which we created was not able to support all of the additional features we wanted to have later on. We wanted to have different user roles, user permissions, and for different users to be able to access just specific data. And just because of our backend system, it was never set up properly. And because of that, we had to build the app multiple times. So that's why I strongly believe that whenever you're creating a tool like this, don't try to rush things. Yes, if you want to build maybe something quickly to test, does it work? Uh, okay, yeah, you can go ahead and go live in a weekend or whatever. But if you want to build an app, which you're going to be investing a lot, which is going to be running your business and which uh, you're going to be kind of using it on a long-term basis, don't make the same mistake as we have because in the end, it costed us a lot more to go ahead and create everything. But on the screen here, I'm going to walk you through of how our backend system works. So we have like team members, we have clients, we have places where we add hours for every single one of the clients, where we connect tasks, where we connect tasks to clients and more of that. And you can see that we're actually building real systems like you would be building in like the usual development process. And of course, finally, there's logic. In our case, we decided to use Wiz and it's a great tool. I mean, it's one of the downsides is that it's still pretty like early in the process. So just because of that, their team is small. I mean, like at the time of you watching the video, this, that might change. But for us, the only constraint when using Wiz for logic was that the app was so early that everything we had to discover, we had to discover on our own. And this is where you're probably gonna run into small issues if you're building something as complex as we are, which is like basically building our agency on a software. And that's exactly why I do also believe that you should kind of just slow down a little bit because whatever you're building, instead of building it in one month, you can build it maybe in three to five months and create a product which is going to be really reliable and which is going to allow your business to scale into the new heights. And with all of that, that sounds really good. And it is, honestly. If you're launching a new SaaS, it's probably like there is no better way than to launch it with no code and just to see how the market works. If you have a marketing website, you want to go ahead and kind of monetize. There is no better way to create a custom platform for your customers and serve all of that data with a no-code platform. Finally, if you want to do what like we've done and kind of automate your business even more by leveraging no code and by leveraging software as a service for your customers, it's one of the best things out there. But there are also problems. And I always like to be honest honest when it comes to like development in no code you can get funding of course but probably the funding amounts are going to be way smaller than if you were building a custom product because in the end you do own the ip sort of but in order to run that ip you're going to need to pay for webflow you're going to need to pay for wizard and you're going to need to pay for xano and if any of these three maybe go out of business or whatever your SaaS is probably going to be gone and that's one of the scary things with platforms like these which are probably going to be solved as we move more and more into the space and more and more people are building custom software but i do strongly believe that like if you're launching something it's even worth to launch it in a no code way to test it out to start getting generating revenue and then use that revenue to bootstrap your own product completely custom completely from scratch and to actually create a product which is going to be kind of profitable and which is maybe going to be your own ip in our case we're going to be sticking with a no code approach because i guess we're a webflow exclusive agency but also on the other side just for us when if we would sell an agency or we would sell like the product or whatever we're completely fine in the product using the no code tech stack versus Maybe some of the other companies are not. And this is something you really need to take into consideration when you're like looking at the tools. There are going to be savings. You're going to do, do things much faster. Updates to the platform are going to be much faster, et cetera, et cetera. But on the other side, you're going to be relying on all these platforms in order for your business to run. But in this day and age, I guess we're all relying on some sort of software or some sort of a company to be up in order for business to run. And to conclude everything, building Six Star was one of our best decisions ever that we've invested in last year. Just because our business runs way smoother, whenever we see a problem in the process, if a developer finishes a ticket and sends it to QA, he needs to fulfill checklist of items we're gonna be sending to him before that can go to QA. And there are many of these things we're adding to the platform to help us grow and scale as a company in the long run. And I would love to see kind of which ideas for SaaS tools or for automating your business with software you have. So you can write a comment down below and I'll say, is it possible or not? Probably is, but I would love to start a discussion around that. 